Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you liked the Lesotho episode. So you know the deal, this is usually the part where I fix up the small mistakes we made in the episode. First of all, the singular demonym of a person from Lesotho is a Mosutu, not Masutu. Also in the video, I accidentally said Maseru was on the east side when it's clearly on the west side of the country. A few things that uh, <coughs> Ken got wrong. Instead of Lesotho currency, the Maloti, he used pictures of the Euros for some reason. Ken, you are on such thin ice, I swear. But you know, okay, fine, I get it. We were in Alaska doing the geography, so eh, I'll let you slide. Also, I got a note from somebody. Commandant Baker says, quick thing to note, when you showed the UK providing defense equipment to Lesotho, you showed American M1A1 Abrams MBTs. Why not use a picture of British made Challenger 2 MBTs? Well, the answer for that, Commandant Baker, is I don't know what those things are. We just kind of Google alpha images of generic military vehicles, and I guess that just popped up. The point is, we're just talking about military stuff. We're not talking about specifics in military vehicles. So I guess Yes, you're right, we could have used British military vehicles, but that, that's not really the point of what we're trying to explain, but we could have. And finally, the last thing I want to say is, depending on how you count, if you consider the number 96 being the actual point of getting to the episode, then yes, the halfway point of Lesotho would be the halfway of all the UN countries. But if you consider finishing the entire episode 96, then the halfway point of the Liberia episode would be the halfway of all the UN countries. The point is, celebrate because we're halfway done either way and next week Liberia will be up. So if you want to celebrate for that, go for it. All right, anyway, we got to get into this flag thing. So without further ado, I had so much fun filming the Lesotho episode. Seriously, it was a celebration. My friends were there. Ken got his little appreciation moment. I also kind of wanted to talk about another thing. A lot of you guys noticed that a lot of things and traits about Lesotho seem like they are kind of similar and parallel to the Jabari tribe in the movie Black Panther. That's because they are. The costume designers and researchers actually used Lesotho a lot when it came to the Jabari tribe. You know, the fact that they live high in the mountains, they use the mohair blankets. And it's really cool how if you watch the movie, you'll observe all these like cultural parallels. It's really cool. Anyway, the flag of Lesotho. The flag is a horizontal tricolor of blue, white, and green with a black traditional basoto hat known as the mokorotlo centered in the middle white band. The blue represents the sky or rain, the green represents the prosperity of the nation, and the white stands for peace, whereas the mokorotlo symbolizes the Basotho people and their heritage as a symbol of the nation. Keep in mind this flag is actually kind of fairly new. They used this flag with another Basotho hat on it after independence, and prior to that they were under the British as a protectorate and use the Union Jack flags. After 1987, a coup ousted the National Party who had been in power for over 20 years and they decided to use this flag with the traditional Basutu shield, club or mobkieri and the Asegai lance and then finally they switched the flag up back in 2006. Which brings us to the coat of arms. The coat of arms contains the exact same imagery as the flag after the coup years with a Basutu shield, club and lance and in the center a tersus of ostrich feathers. Flanked on each side are two Basutu horses supporting the shield as the crocodile lies on the shield and at the bottom lies the motto Koto Pulanala, which means peace, reign, and prosperity. The coat of arms was adopted shortly after independence and has only changed slightly in color in 2006. So that is just about it. Uh, that means you know what time it is. Geography fan mail time. So we got lots of cool stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to show you. Let's just jump into it. So you know the deal. We always start off with postcards. So first off, we actually got like four postcards from Prague, Czechia, Tomislav from Croatia. Thank you for sending these three. And uh, Vaclav, thank you for sending this one with the clock. This thing is really famous, by the way. It's so cool and beautiful. Alexis from the DR sends Fortaleza Ozama, the oldest fortress in the Western Hemisphere, I believe, or castle. Uh, I think your name is Nico, sent this from Stockholm. Caitlin sent this from Panama, and she says she works at the Smithsonian in DC. Uh, Tarima is Indonesian, but sent this from China. I think your name is Zaid. He sends this from Chicago and he writes, uh, sorry for the depressing photo. <laughs> Thank you Farhan for sending this from Malaysia. It's the Raflesia, the biggest flower in the world. The icon of the Malaysian state of Sabah. Davi sends this from Lensois Marones, the wet desert of Brazil. <clears throat> My voice is cracking. He says, we're two brothers from Rio de Janeiro traveling through the Maranao state. We went to Lensois Marones. It is breathtaking. Oh, you have no idea how much I want to go here. It's so amazing. It's so different from any other land. 
landscape. And we got two Filipinos. Patrick sends this from Boracay. And Abby drew a picture of the Sanctuario de San Jose located in Las Casas, Filipinas de Acusar. Wow, you actually drew this. That's so cool. Thanks a lot, Abby. All right, here are some letters. Eric from Michigan, thank you for drawing these flags. Oh, and Abby, who sent that drawing of a postcard, uh, sent a letter as well. My name is Abby. I reside in Quezon City. Here are some Tagalog phrases I believe you should try to pronounce on camera. Nakakapagapapa. Abag. I don't know. Ken could probably do much better than me. He actually speaks Tagalog. All I know is Kumasta and Palabok. Every time I go to Jollibee, I always get Palabok. I actually really like that stuff. Uh, thank you, Wyatt from Texas. And he is actually Pakistani American. He drew a Pakistan flag. Interesting. Your name is Wyatt. That's not a Pakistani name. Well, either way. Cool. This was sent from Farhan from Malaysia. Dude, check it. I literally just opened his envelope like this. Like there's no tape, no adhesive. It just, it was folded. I'm surprised it didn't get destroyed in the mail. That's so cool. It's like one of those like 3D cards. It pulls out and it moves like that. Ah, oh, this is so cool. All right, this is from Shreyas from Cypress, Texas. I believe you are Indian American and you live in... Te that's so crazy. We just got something from a Pakistani American who also lives in Texas. So that's so crazy. You two should probably meet each other. You're both in Texas. He drew a bunch of flags, map of Canada and the US, British colonial territory flags. By the way, keep in mind, like I don't mind if kids watch the show, but parents just keep in mind, my largest demographic are 18 to 24 year olds. So that's a demographic I mostly gear my content to appeal to. Like just full disclosure, Geography Now is not a children's show, but it's not like an adult themed show either. It's just a geography show that doesn't contain adult themed, but adult leveled humor with a lot of complex anecdotes. So again, I don't mind if kids watch the show. It's just, I'm not deliberately trying to appeal to children. David from San Marcos, Texas. Man, we're getting a lot of Texas people today. Uh, he sends this cool book, Discover Your Language. Oh, that's cool. It goes through Arabic and Cyrillic. Oh, wait, you're the guy that wrote this book. <laughs> <laughs> you sent me your book. Okay, David. Uh, wow, I, I just realized that. Okay, uh, next up, Hong Kong. Hey, Barbs. I'm one of your biggest fans from Hong Kong. My name is Keith, like the guy from the show. <laughs> yes! I started to watch your videos from the Cyprus episode. And uh, he writes a bunch of cool things about his home in Hong Kong. Some notable sites in Hong Kong are Ocean Park, Tai Tam Reservoir, the Big Buddha statue, Hong Kong Disneyland, Victoria Peak. Oh, man, Hong Kong is just a whole other deal. Like, ah, oh, I would love to go there. It's pretty expensive though, isn't it? Tsinghua University Notebook. Wow, that's so cool, man. Thanks a lot. I love this. Uh, next up, Milo from Indonesia. Uh, you didn't write a letter, but he sent uh, The Adventures of Tintin written in Bahasa Indonesia. That is so cool. I've never seen the comics written in th th that language. I read this in English, but yeah, wow, cool. I believe uh, this is the one about the Ottoman something, right? And uh, what is this? President Sukarno. Oh, it's like the hat that he wears. Comes with a little bandana. Okay, you know what? Hat coming off. I guess I'll wear this for the rest of the episode. All right, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm doing this right. So tie on the bandana first. I guess I put this on. Did I do that right? No, I, oh man, it's so messy. You're gonna laugh at me. Well, sorry, Indonesia, but I don't know how to do this. I'm not Indonesian, but I I'm putting on your hat. I mean, you sent it to me, so you knew it was gonna happen. And uh, speaking of Indonesia, right next door, their neighbors, Malaysia. Hey, Barbs, I'm Joe from Puchong, Malaysia. I've sent you some souvenirs. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. Ironic how I'm wearing an Indonesian hat and holding a Malaysia flag. <laughs> Some Chinese calligraphy. I think it says Barbie because he wrote Barbie down here. Oh, now this is really cool. He sent a bunch of pictures of uh, Malaysian stuff. I had this when I was in Singapore. Roti, traditional clothing. They also have like Hindu festivals. There's apparently a festival where women throw their phone numbers into a lake, the Datu Kong Shrine. And uh, just like Singapore, they have multilingual signs. He sent a Malaysian fan, a magnet, and uh, I guess this is like a bracelet or something. All right, next up, we got this from Quincy, Massachusetts from Kaden. Neko! Oh, I know these. Dude, this is a really cool box though. I'm, I'm definitely gonna keep the box. Hi Barbs, I'm Kaden from Quincy, Massachusetts. I live almost right next to where John Adams and John Quincy Adams were born. Neko wafers were invented by Oliver Chase in 1847. He became a pioneer member of the New England Confectionery Company. Adam and Marek from Czech Republic. <laughs> they sent a uh, Czech dark chocolate. Okay, this is actually really cool. They actually made an entire country called Cartel and they made their own 
own like Geography Now booklet of their own country. I believe they made the whole thing on, uh, what do you call it? Um, Minecraft, that game. Guys, once again, in case you haven't noticed, I'm pretty old, okay? I don't, you kids and your games and things that you do. They actually talk about like the subdivisions and the political geography, the regions, the resources, the people groups, the friend zone. And finally, Daniel from West Virginia. Uh, that's interesting. He sent this plaque. Oh, old coins. Okay. One, I guess, is a Swedish coin, a half penny from England, a Hungarian coin from 1905, and a Napoleon II 1856 coin from France. Whoa. Why are you sending this to me, man? This is an antique. All right. So those are all of the letters and packages for this week. You know what time it is? It's time for a return address contest. I put all your uh, return addresses in this little pouch thing, and I pick one out, and whoever wins, I send a little gift to. So let's do it. Okay. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. I'm going to grab a paper small one because last time it was big. Let's see. Philippine from Tour France. You just won. So uh, yeah, guys, thank you for sending all this cool stuff, putting your hometowns on display. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like. Uh, you've just been flagged. Ken, I guess you're still uh, hired. And uh, yeah, stay cool. Stay tuned.